Doing my best Vince McMahon there. And welcome to Learning the Ropes. And if you listen to that music, and if your blood isn't flowing, and you're not excited, it is WrestleMania season. I am so fucking pumped for this. I'm sorry, I'm a little excited. I'm going to try to calm down. But it is WrestleMania season, folks. And we're kicking it off here tonight on Learning the Ropes. Of course, I'm XLJ the OG. Joined by my partner in crime, my brother from another mother, Mr. b How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good and getting the compliments from the viewers already. Look at these two studs right here. We love you too, Dad Hat. Um, glad that. you are here uh, with us. Joining us as we get are officially on the road to WrestleMania here at Learning the Ropes. We are going to be covering the history of WrestleMania. Now, don't right. worry, kiddos. We're not covering it all in one episode because <laughs> that, that would be near. Impossible. Impossible. We are going to go one through, through ten, ten tonight. To ten tonight, and that's going to keep us busy enough. So and up um, until Mania itself. So it's going to be I some mean, fun times, and that's right, Mania season, baby. 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 Well, as we always like to do here on Learning the Ropes, we got to kick it off with a little plug a palooza, Mister B Roll. Why don't you take it away? There's no other way to start learning the ropes. Um. We thank you for joining us over here on the Panda Wrestling Company uh, Twitch channel because I can say that word here, gosh darn it! <laughs> That's right. So, you won't so, get slapped on the hand. Sorry, sorry, um, but yeah, apparently that's a bad word on on TikTok. Um, but but then again, I am also live on TikTok trying to draw people over here, so it probably just heard me. So there you go. You know, it is it is what it is. Um, but we thank you for joining us and, you know, go ahead and hit that follow button if you have not done so already and go ahead. If you feel so inclined to go ahead and subscribe, you can actually subscribe for F R E E free. Yes. I said free. How can you do that? You may ask. Well, if you have an Amazon prime membership, you can use your Amazon prime membership to get you a free subscription to any Twitch channel. So why not use it on the Panda wrestling company where you got your boys from learning the ropes who are going to educate you and probably make fools of themselves all at the same time so because we're good like that the but, conclusion. but that's not all you can catch us two knuckleheads also over on cole tv see you thought i was going to do merch you thought i was going to do merch i was going there. for it yeah you yeah me. Uh, yeah i like it but XLJ the OG, can you tell us what we have coming up on Cole TV this week? Absolutely. Uh, so this upcoming Wednesday, we got a brand new episode of our popular show, The Hunt. And this episode, I am joined by Daddy O, my dad, as we check out a comic book shop, one of my favorites in our area, Comic Book University. So that'll be on Wednesday. Of course, Thursday, you can catch a replay of our show here tonight. And Friday... You want to tune in because it's AEW Revolution and our Revolution Prediction Show will be up here at the end of the week. And that's what we got going on yeah, Cold man. TV. And hey, if you follow me on TikTok, I said I was going to have a very special announcement tonight. So without further ado, why don't we just make that announcement right now, Mr. B-Roll? Go for it. <laughs> Oh, 
Be there and be squared. Squared Circle Expo, that is. We'll see you there. There you have it, folks. That Blech. was our big announcement. We are going to be doing our first convention. Yes, oh, we. Man. Yes, we are indeed. And thank you, Mr. Robot. That's officially when I'm dubbing that voice. And who knows? <laughs> who knows? Maybe Mr. Robots um, will have to to make a return. Um, who who knows? But that is right, kiddos. We will be heading to squared circle expo three if you are in the midwest area oh don't worry we're getting there matt Ward. we're getting, we're getting there. there you hang in there um we we will be at squared circle expo three in indianapolis indiana if you are within remotely close to driving distance shoot even if you have the capability to afford a plane ticket come to this expo well worth it not only not, just for us but so not many for more. us but for oh. I mean, you saw a list of some of the stars. And that's not everybody. Have. That's, not, that's everybody. not everybody. They've added more people like Jay no. Lethal. They've added uh, Doink the Clown, your favorite. Not, you got nothing? All right. You're still going. You're still going. It's going to be okay. You need to get past this fear of cloud. Besides, this is Babyface Doink. It's not Heel Doink. So it's okay. He may have Dink with him, too. You never know. Anywho. And in addition with all that, folks, we've got some pretty sweet merch, if I do say so myself. And you can get yes. that merch over on SweetDollFaceCreations.com slash Big Cartel. Yes, and we are most definitely, um, let's just say, Chubby will have some merch very, very, yeah. Stay very, tuned on that. Oh, yeah. Very soon. Yeah. Um, and also uh, stay tuned for some additional announcements coming from Cole TV about Squared Circle Expo. Maybe perhaps a special guest. Just saying. Maybe. Sooner rather than later. But hey, speaking of Squared Circle Expo, why don't we bring on one of our guests right now? Because he is actually also going to be there at Squared Circle Expo, too. Let's bring him in. Brian from Developmentally Speaking. How are you, good sir? I'm good. How are you? We are doing awesome, and we are so hyped for Squared Circle Expo 3. And I know you are, too, but I know you got a lot of stuff cooking, too. Why don't you give us a little what you got going on in your world? Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Brian Asbury. I'm the host of Developmentally Speaking. It's a YouTube channel. Um, currently, we're at 623 subscribers, like we're on the road to WrestleMania. I'm on the road to 700. So if you guys would, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and let's grow together. Um, so we have Developmentally Speaking, where we cover the developmental territories. We're the first podcast to do so. So you get to meet and see a lot of, of people uh, in do the what could have been, what should have been. Uh, we just had an exclusive interview with Brad Maddox. It was his first one in over seven years. And then we do Glow Up, which started originally with the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. And now we have a deal with WOW out of entertainment, out of Los Angeles. Los Angeles yeah. <laughs> so now we're interviewing those superheroes. And then it's going to morph into just women's wrestling in general. That's our Monday and Wednesday show. And then on Fridays, we have Connecting Through Wrestling, where we just connect with all wrestlers, uh, personalities through through all walks of life. We actually just uh, did an interview with the Berserker earlier today. So it, it's awesome. really starting to grow. Yes, starting to grow a lot. And uh, we appreciate all your support. And uh, Squared Circle is where we met uh, last year for the first time. That's right. That's right. True I, story. I'd, I'd known your partner for years, but first time meeting mm -hmm. you. So, yeah, man. Yep. It, it, you You're could welcome. say it's the origin story, if you will. <laughs> That's right. The convention scene, it's good. It's good to, to do that and get your name out there and mingle with all these legends. And it, it's, uh, it's a fun time. You guys will have a great time. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. We're pumped. I mean, it's not, it's amazing how this is only the third one, and it's just like they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Like, they are killing it. It literally is, folks, the largest pro wrestling convention in the entire Midwest. I don't care what anybody says. Mm -hmm. I would say that WrestleCon, is, that's just like the biggest one because it mm -hmm. follows Mania. And then I would say Squared Circle is second for sure. 
if that tells you anything. So you all need to be there. Mark mm-hmm. your calendars and get ready because it's going to be an awesome, awesome show. Well, hey, we got another guest with us, don't we, tonight, Mr. B-Roll? And I hope this doesn't get confusing because we've got another Brian joining us. <laughs> we do. Let's see if we can get him in here. Brian's House of Random, are you with us? Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Can you see me? We can, we can hear you, but we can't see okay. your beautiful face, though. So. Uh, well, you, okay. Uh, I'll have to give you drug tested for that one because uh, me and beautiful face don't match. Um, I had to, I had technical issues, so I had to switch computers to my wife's computer, and I put access uh, microphone, and I thought it let me do camera. It's yeah, I think if you go it. into your your settings, there it should let you. Okay, let you do it. We're live, pal. I had to do it. Live, pal. <laughs> <laughs> camera here my camera da, 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 da. i love just listening to you talk to yourself sir as you're trying to <laughs> like this is this is this is 40 like i'm right there with you my friend <laughs> yeah yeah um let me and this is by no means try okay let's try like that. is is this is it a laptop or is it like a desktop it is a laptop and it was covered up so let me okay camera well, I used to be in radio, and I have a Phase Four radio, so maybe that'd be better. <laughs> people, can, people can't see the hat, so because because literally I've done it before, where mine has like a little sliding cover, and I'm like, why is my camera not working? Yeah, that's what my and, wife was saying, flagging me down, like, hey, it's still covered. I never use the thing, so I got it. Uh, so it's all right. We'll I can her. do it. I can do it right now. See? Oh, look. Ooh. Now we're here. Now we're having all. Right. It's the pitch twi- black match. Now we're twenty. Yeah, or it could be the blindfold match from WrestleMania Seven, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Ah, anyway. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? Well, mm-hmm. we'll get your stuff figured out, I'm sure, Brian. But let's get right into it because we got a lot to talk about because it's Wrestle Freaking Mania. I mean, I this is my time of year has been for years, and it does my heart good just to see how far it's come. Like, I never remember remember watching it as, like, a kid, you know. I'm watching some of these manias we're talking about tonight. And, like, I always thought it would be cool if it would, like, go on to be as huge as it is now. And look at it now, man. It's, like, freaking they were, okay, at the Super Bowl, they were doing, like, on their pre-show packages. They were talking about the stadium there in Arizona. And they talked about uh, WrestleMania 26 as, like, some of the greatest events that's ever happened there. If that tells you anything. So, I mean, it's just amazing. WrestleMania, it's WrestleMania. It's, it's, mm-hmm. It is in pop culture. It is in the lexicon. When you, even if you're not a wrestling fan, if you say WrestleMania, you know what the hell we're talking about. It is the showcase of the Immortals. There you go, man. And, of course, we got to kick it off and start with the very first WrestleMania. And it's, uh, a lot of you all know this, but we'll kind of go into the brief history of it. Like, uh, WrestleMania 1 was a gamble. It was a huge gamble by Vince McMahon and the WWF, and it was just pretty much they put all their money in the basket, so to speak. And it was like if it if it was success, great. But if it failed, we wouldn't even be talking about this. We wouldn't even be talking about the WWE, WWF. And a lot of that, of course, if you're a wrestling historian, you know, uh, Fence was able to put up the money for that show because of the Black Saturday remember how they came to, to TBS and then uh, Crockett come back. And so in a way, their competitors paid for WrestleMania, which is a little interesting tidbit when you think about it. But with WrestleMania, especially the first one, what they wanted to do is go beyond just being a wrestling event, but make it into a spectacle. And that's what they did, especially through their connections with MTV and that audience. Because if you look at the lineup, the celebrity guest that was involved at WrestleMania, I mean, you got Cindy Lauper, of course. Um, you know, some of them, of course. Not, yeah, there you go. Yeah, because girls just want to have fun. Of course, now if you watch Young Rock, she's being played by the man Becky Lynch, which is pretty wild. But um, yeah. uh, well, she, that was actually my uh, Muhammad Ali. Oh, oh, okay. I, I thought I wasn't <laughs> sure where you're going with that, but yes, the great Muhammad Ali was there. Liberace, which I know a lot of you young folks don't even know who the hell that is, but um, he was there. And then uh, also you had, um, oh, man, I can't think. The guy who managed the Yankees for years, I can't think of his name. Tony oh. Tony Martin or something? I don't know. Anyways, you get the point. There was a ton of celebrities involved 
in WrestleMania. And of course, the very first WrestleMania was held in Madison Square Garden. Because, I mean, why not? Why wouldn't it be, you know? And it was interesting, too, because they were looking for, like, a name of WrestleMania. And Mr. B-Roll, did you know, actually, ring announcer Howard Finkel is the one who came up with the name for WrestleMania? No, really. No, no way. I figured it, you know, I figured, you know, Vince McMahon. I wonder what Vince, I wonder what Vince wanted to call it. Oh, my God. I can only imagine. <laughs> it was prob- probably something absurd or something like that. Uh... He probably just wanted to call it, it's going to be good. <laughs> good shit the show (laughs) but but no Howard Fink will come up with the name because of um uh Beatlemania so they wanted to be like okay what about Wrestlemania and thus hey the rest they say is history because the Beatles are awesome mm, mm, I'm not a Beatles fan you know this uh, (laughs) yeah that's another story for another time that's why I said it so March 31st, 1985, the very first WrestleMania takes place from Madison Square Garden. And uh, believe it or not, B-Roll, this actually, the first WrestleMania wasn't a pay-per-view. Because at the time, pay-per-view was really not around or was just coming on in its early infancy. So they used to do this thing back in the day called closed circuit television. So what you would do essentially is you pay a ticket to a movie theater and then you would go watch a live uh, feed of the show. And they sold the shit out of this, like at uh, all the. I think they literally sold out at every venue they were at, pretty much. Um, but yeah, some interesting tidbits of WrestleMania there. Now, if you look at the first card itself, it's kind of like, um, I mean, the the openers and the mid card stuff is kind of, eh, you know. There's there's some names on here that you've probably never even heard of or surprised that actually is on the card. First of all, do you know what the very first match in WrestleMania history is? I should know because I just watched this earlier today. But it was actually Tito Santana against the Executioner, the match yes. Executioner. Yes. It's your very first match in WrestleMania history, which uh, Tito Santana would win that matchup. And then King Kong Bundy against Special Delivery Jones in a literal squash match. I think it was like five seconds or seven seconds or something like that. Something um, like that. Yeah, it was. They very had so cool. many matches for those for those early manias. There was. Oh yeah, was yeah. Nikios. Yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. It was just. I, I guess it's kind of the concept today too. We're like we got to get everybody on the card, right? So mm-hmm. um, <laughs> another one: Ricky Steamboat and Matt Bourne. Which actually, on paper, that's actually a pretty good matchup. Both are very skilled wrestlers. Um, how about this one? Brutus Beefcake. Not when he was the barber, but Brutus Beefcake against David San Martino, uh, which was Bruno San Martino's uh, son, who did not have a successful career <laughs> in wrestling. Let's just put it not that way. Rise to the same heights as his father. No, not quite, but he had some big shoes to fill anyway. Um, yeah. He also had a tag team championship match between um, the uh, U.S. Express, Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda, defending against the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Folkoff. And actually, this was the first title change in WrestleMania history as the Sheik and Folkoff uh, would win the tag team titles because uh, you got to give some extra to Sheiky, baby. Um, (laughs) Sheiky, baby. Sheiky, baby. The Intercontinental title was also on the line with Greg the Hammer Fountain defending against Junkyard Dog. But this show is really defined by three matches. Um, first, you got to talk about the, um, which I don't know what it would be now with inflation, but back then it was a $15,000 body slam match between Andre the Giant and Big John Stud. And obviously the winner of this match was whoever body slammed the other. I'm going to give you one guess. Who do you think won this one, B-Roll? Andre. Andre did, in fact, win the match and was throwing the money out to the crowd in one of my favorite scenes in wrestlemania history is when andre's throwing the money out in the crowd and bobby the brain the little weasel comes from behind and grabs the duffel bag of the money and like yanks it away from him and runs off (laughs) now that's some good shit pal (laughs) is that is that long-term storytelling hey yeah because bobby heenan's uh bobby heenan's the weasel man so and boy oh boy interesting how a couple years later the relationship between those two would change which we'll talk about here in a bit uh But that was one of the big ones. The other big one was, and I think it's amazing to look back at this because we know like where women's wrestling went now where women's wrestling was, but you folks got to keep in mind, 
there was the women were really involved in a huge angle at the very first WrestleMania because it was for the women's championship with Lilani Kai, uh, who was champion, um, along with Fabulous Mula, the former champion in her corner, defending against Wendy Richter, who had um, Cindy Lauper in her corner. So there you go, man. Um, the rock and wrestling connection. The rock and wrestling connection, man. So yeah. Yeah. She's, but uh, she's rumored the Hall of Fame this year. Yeah, and I think that is so freaking overdue. Like when they do the celebrities, it's kind of like you scratch your head, but there's mm-hmm. a couple that come to mind. She's one of the first ones along with Andy Kaufman. That's like, why the yeah. hell are they not in the Hall of Fame? Yeah. Like seriously, seriously, I mean, wasn't like didn't Dave LaGreca recently go on a rant about that? I like, think so, yeah. Why the heck? <laughs> yeah, there's there's no reason why she shouldn't be. But with all of her contributions and what she did for wrestling, because, Brent, you got to keep in mind, man, it wasn't just like a one-time, one deal. Like, she was at a multitude of events to build this, not, not only build this up, but just, like, create the angle and help with the angle, too. So, yeah, Cindy Lauper, long overdue, and I really hope that she gets in the main, in the Hall of Fame. But let's talk about WrestleMania's first main event, that tag team match it, that classic matchup. Hulk Hogan and Mr. T going up against Paul Mr. Wonderful Orndorff and Rowdy Roddy Piper. And Pit the Fool. That's right. Yeah, Pit the Fool. Who does use 1 800 Collect? Remember those commercials back in the day? That made me uh, yes, think of it. Oh, the A Team was awesome. I loved it as a kid. A Team was pretty phenomenal. Great show. I, w- I was practice. there when he went in the Hall of Fame, and I didn't think he was ever going to stop talking. Oh my God! That my, mama, poor- my, my mama, mama, my mama, my mama, my mama. <laughs> my mama. Like how? Like that Hall of Fame speech was literally like thirty plus minutes, was it not? It was probably like go 10, 15, and he. I. It was well over a half an hour, like half an hour, forty minutes. And they're like. I love me some Mr. T, though, but yeah. (laughs) Um, But in the respective corners, you had Superfly Jimmy Snuka with Hulk Hulk and Jimmy, or Hulk and Mr. T, and you had Cowboy Bob in the corner of Piper and Orndorff. And the real life, like, kind of heat between Piper and T was like, and just the heat in general that Piper was generating for this mania, chef's kiss. God, it's a thing of legends. I mean, it is a massive proponent of why wrestlemania one worked so good was because of this main event and because the hatred for piper you know a lot of people say like all the True story involved yeah. mr t but damn it if you don't have rowdy rowdy piper and wrestlemania one it just doesn't work nope but the, you, you get there to see rowdy piper get beat up yeah exactly you, know I mean? you, you exactly you want to see mr people t think, yeah people think it was hulk hogan but you you went there to see Rowdy Piper get beat up. Yeah, that's exactly People right. View it that way. Yeah. Yep. I couldn't agree more, man. But uh, you know, and the celebrities involved. Here's a little interesting tidbit. We mentioned Muhammad Ali. Did you know Muhammad Ali was actually supposed to be the referee in the ring, but he actually was wanting to get like physical with the wrestlers and tease. So they had to assign Pat Patterson as the official in the uh, in the ring, and they put Muhammad Ali on the outside. <laughs> True story. Okay, but speaking of being on the outside, but now in on the inside, Brian's yes. house of random. We can That's... see him, we can hear him, hopefully. And we're on ready this to... day, I see Brian clearly now. <laughs> but can he hear us? That is the question. Oh, we got the beautiful mug. We got the money shot, if you will, but no, no audio. Hello, Brian, can you hello? hear you? Uh, Oh, yeah, there he is. Here you go. Hang on. Yeah. Yay. Okay. We got it figured out, folks. But yeah, that WrestleMania 1, man, if WrestleMania 1 doesn't be the success it is, we're, we're like I say, we're not having this conversation. So how do you top WrestleMania 1, Mr. B-Roll? Well, WrestleMania 2. <laughs> There's not just one, not two, but three separate venues that they would host from. So they would host from New York the at the Nassau Coliseum, uh, in Chicago at the Rosemont Horizon, and out in L.A., I believe at the Sports Arena or whatever the hell they call it. Uh, back called it back then. 
So you got three different shows. You got a lot of elements going on here, man, pretty much. So it was like it was kind of like each each site got like an hour of wrestling pretty much. Mm. And once again, this was another one that was closed circuit television. Now, one thing they did was they like had the announcers, they split them up and the, on the color commentary. And they would also have them joined by a uh, celebrity at the time. Of course, I'm going to say celebrities and. I know a lot of you people are going to be like, who the hell is that? But like <laughs> Susan St. James was with Vince McMahon in um, New York. Kathy Lee Crosby was in Chicago with uh, Gorilla Monsoon and Gene Okerlund. And how about this threesome? <laughs> Jesse the Body Ventura, Lord Alfred Hayes, and Elvira in Los Angeles. So, and, and yeah, now that I say that, that would be a pretty weird threesome. <laughs> with, 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 <laughs> what would Lord Alfred be like the whole time? Like, all right, to Coliseum Video, Post Office Box 1311, Fairfield, New Jersey, 07. Oh, yeah. Anyways. Uh, How ballsy of a move is that to, to run three venues on just the second event? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, damn, dude. Like, okay, the first one's <laughs> successful, but fuck, you're going to do that? So I was like, okay. <laughs> um, also, this was the first mania to have a, um, a celebrity sing the national anthem as Ray Charles, or I'm sorry, America the Beautiful, because remember, Vince McMahon doesn't like the national anthem. It's always got to be America the Beautiful. So, but that's a true story there, my friend. But, um, yeah, so Ray Charles was in attendance. For, th this one has a ton of celebrities at it, too. Like um, Joan Rivers, Joe Frazier. Um, you had Ozzy Osbourne, of course, in the corner of uh, the British Bulldogs on this night. Uh, a lot of football players, too, that would be featured in the Battle Royal in Chicago. Let's just kind of run. So each each venue pretty much had like a big main event match, essentially. So Chicago or New York kind of, I think, drew the short end of the stick because New York got uh, Mr. T and Rowdy Roddy Piper in a boxing match. Not a not a wrestling match. No, no, no. In a boxing match. And it was OK, I guess, if I'm being nice. I mean, I love me some Piper and stuff, but it just. Yeah. It just did not deliver. <laughs> but uh, in the Chicago, on, or I'm sorry, in the New York uh, card, you did have Paul Orndorff against the Magnificent Morocco. Uh, how about this? For the Intercontinental Championship, Macho Man Randy Savage defending against George the Animal Steel, uh, which was a, a fun storyline back in the day because George Steel was lusting for Elizabeth, brother. And, uh, you know, it kind of played into the whole, like, King Kong and the, the Beauty and the Beast, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, with that. So that was kind of cool. Uh, also, here's a random one for you. Jake Roberts, Jake the Snake Roberts against George Wells uh, was on the card, too, at the uh, Nassau Coliseum. Now let's go over to the Rosemont Horizon, where you would get another four matches. Um you would get a flag match between Corporal Kirshner and Nikolai Folkoff. A women's championship match with the great Mula defending against Velvet McIntyre. But the big two on this one was the British Bulldogs going up against the Dream Team, Greg Valentine and Bruce Beefcake, with Johnny Fallon in the corner. And like I said earlier, uh, the British Bulldogs would have Ozzy Osbourne. That's right, in their corner. And the Bulldogs would win the tag titles. Uh, and I would say probably this is the best match on this card, is this tag team matchup. Um, but the main event of this uh, for this site was the 20-man battle royal featuring superstars from the WWF and the NFL, which if you remember a couple weeks ago here on Learning the Ropes, we did talk about on our football episode. Yep, because it was the Super Bowl Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. That's right. But Other, uh, otherwise known as the episode where the game got tight there towards the end, where we were just, we just like, started watching the game. It's like, okay, we're gonna stop <laughs> talking about wrestling for a minute and watch this game because it was a good game. But um, ultimately, Andre the Giant, of course, would be the winner of the battle royal. Uh, last eliminating, believe it or not, Brett the Hitman Hart. There's a matchup you probably didn't know that actually kind of they tussled in the ring at a WrestleMania. No, I, that, I feel like that could win you a lot of uh, bar bets. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think uh I think Andre's winning that one. <laughs> I love me some Brett, but yeah. That's the uh, one the fridge was in, right? That's the one the fridge was in, yeah, where the fridge eliminates uh Big John Stud. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the uh the battle royal. Um let's talk about the last part of WrestleMania two, where they're in California. Uh so this one that you got pretty much was Ricky Steamboat against Hercules. Uh, you had the beautiful Adrian Adonis against Uncle Elmer. How about Terry and Haas Funk against Tito Santana and the Junkyard Dog? And in your main event, Hulk Hogan, King Kong Bundy, inside the 15-foot-high steel cage, brother, for the WWF Championship. And believe it or not, this would be like the only cage match in WrestleMania history up until like a couple years ago when they did Shane McMahon and uh, Braun Strowman in that uh, shit show of a match. Um, <laughs> I don't know which is worse, that or King Kong and the Hulkster. Mm, I take, take your pick. But um, but yeah, so uh, and both, of course... Both, I mean, both involved like, you know, two big, bald, ugly guys. I mean... Pretty much. But uh, the Hulkster, of course, would retain his title, but I mean, WrestleMania 2 was like, it, I, it was more so just like, okay, the spectacle of it once again, like, okay, they're getting huger, they're bigger. But we got to talk about it. The WrestleMania that really put WrestleMania on the map, WrestleMania 3. I mean, the Pontiac Silverstone, you've heard it a thousand times, folks. 93,173 allegedly that attended uh this show but you whether regardless of what that number is or not there is a shitload of people at this show mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. especially for back in the day when the for wwf i mean this was like a huge draw and there was only one matchup that could draw this many people it was hulk hogan versus andre the giant for the very first time man although it wasn't really the very first time but we're gonna play it off like it is yeah. um but yeah the, the the whole like turning andre heel him joining bobby the brain heenan oh my god dude this was like i was a little guy a little little guy and like was just kind of still understanding because i will admit i am the same age as wrestlemania so like i i'm gonna be 39 this year so um, that's i mean that's one way to always look at it like <laughs> yeah I, I always look at it, it's like well i'm as old as wrestlemania so and then now like at first was cool and now it's like oh fuck i'm getting old but anyway <laughs> just, just wait till they get to wrestlemania 50 oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah hopefully i make it no i'm just kidding <laughs> um but yeah but dude back the, to the immovable force beating the immo immovable object Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, uh, that call from Gorilla Monsoon at all time. I mean, just there's scenery from this WrestleMania. But it's like you still see played on best of packages to this day. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. it's, dude, it's WrestleMania three, man. It's it's WrestleMania freaking three. And like, I can still like, okay, Hogan and Andre. It's no like Luthez Gotch match, but by God, it's it's it like for the. If you're looking for like the intensity and you're looking at for like in ring storytelling and psychology and stuff, man, it's it's there for you. Because just like the way they, they laid out this match and did it. It's, I love the beginning of it, too, where Hogan goes to slam him. Andre falls on him like when they get that one, two, and it's almost like a three. And that's when like you, you got to put yourself back in that time period, man, because it was just like there's no way Hulk Hogan's beating Andre the Giant. Mm -hmm. There's like no way, no way Hulk Hogan is going over Andre the Giant. It's just, it's there's no freaking possible way. But you know, we're what? emotionally invested. Yeah, I am a real American. <laughs> yes, yes, and the uh, the, he took uh, his vitamins. He took his vitamins. He saved his prayers, and he used that creative control, brother. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, like no, like he, the way he like presented it to Andre, and it was like Andre. At least as the legend goes, just like Andre pretty much just like they didn't he didn't even call it until he got to the ring, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but Andre doing doing right for the business and putting over Hulk Hogan. Um it, it was definitely huge. And just that moment of all time when Hulk Hogan slams Andre the Giant. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, Andre had been slammed before and had been slammed by Hulk Hogan, but just not in that type of setting. Yeah. And it's not like if they space. 
yeah, yeah, exactly, at a national stage. And it's not like nowadays where if you did that, like a thousand, like millions of people be watching it on like uh, TikTok or Instagram or something. Yeah. You know? And mm-hmm. not to, not to get off topic, but I do want to uh, bring so in in essence, you know, Hulk Hogan got the rub here from Andre Andre the Giant. When you take a look at Hulk Hogan's career down the road and creative control, brother, I mean, it's just you know, it's just so interesting to kind of look at somebody who probably got one of the greatest rubs of all time, and then you know, with some of the issues that, you know, eventually came up. Yeah. Um, it's just, well, you got to look at it this way too. This era we're talking about WrestleMania tonight. It, there's no doubt about it, folks. This is the Hulk Hogan era. I mean, yeah. this is like what, mm-hmm. what made WrestleMania. Like, I mean, whether you love him or hate him, whatever Hulk Hogan is synonymous with WrestleMania. He's a huge draw. He's what brought the people in. I mean, it's, uh, I was looking at a statistic the other day. And I think uh, this was crazy. I think Hogan was in nine WrestleMania main events, and it's like, or eight WrestleMania main events, all right? And not, and I'm talking like going on last, essentially. Mm-hmm. And I believe Roman Reigns is literally one or two off from breaking his record, which is crazy to think. Yeah. So you just look at the errors, man. There you go. This is the Hogan error. Now we're in the air of your tribal chief, but that's another yeah. story for another time. Mm-hmm. But as great as this WrestleMania is, is known for the um, match between Hogan and Andre. It is without a doubt what people were talking about the water, co- water cooler the next day. The match that stole the show, the Intercontinental Championship matchup between Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Macho Man Randy Savage, and what is still referred to to this day as one of the greatest Intercontinental title matches in all of WrestleMania history. Hell, in all of history, really, when you think Mm -hmm. about it. Uh, Dude, this match is a clinic. There's so many wrestlers that's talked about this. And it's interesting, like, how they did this match, you know, because, like, if you ask Steamboat, like, who his favorite match was versus him, versus Savage versus Flair, he kind of sums it up this way. Like, with Savage, they literally, like, had every minute, detail down on a notebook whereas with flair they called it in the ring so different styles but you know hey it worked man and it and like i say this match stole the freaking show at wrestlemania that year i mean Absolutely. people were there yeah dude uh people were there for andre and hulk but this is what they came for with steamboat and savage like yeah. brian what's your memories about that matchup yeah, that you know <sighs> That is what the definition uh, of wrestling, where it was going. It was, you know, it was elevating that title. That is the workhorse title. And they worked their asses off that night and showed, you know, showed the world that they were here, you know. Yeah. And Macho Man was climbing, you know, he was on his way to the top. And that match solidified that. That's, yeah. And you look at the trajectory, especially a year later here, uh, which we'll talk about here in a moment. But, The other thing I I love about this Mania, too, is there's a lot of other matches on this card. There was some great storytelling and great um, storyline buildup. One of the other bigger matches on this card was kind of being dubbed as Rowdy Roddy Piper's last matchup in the Mm -hmm. WWF. It was uh, Roddy Piper against uh, Adrian Adonis. And actually, this was a hair versus hair match, believe it or not. And of course, Roddy Piper would win. But this also would be the birth of Brutus Beefcake's gimmick because he was still kind of part of the dream team and stuff. But now he came out to help shave the head of Adrian Adonis and join the babyface mm-hmm. Piper. And thus Brutus the Barber was born. So there you go. Another matchup on this card that was uh, had a lot of great build was Harley Race against the Junkyard Dog. Or should I say, I'm sorry, King Harley Race. And a loser must bow to the other. Uh, matchup uh was the, like i say this is a fun one it's short but i mean just the build up and stuff was pretty neat uh also you had a, a matchup of some powerhouse guys at the time a battle of the full nelsons if you will with hercules hernandez against billy jack haynes uh was another match that was um well presented on this card and of course we got to talk about jake the snake roberts against the honky tonk man 
and Jake the Snake would have Alice Cooper in his corner uh, in his matchup against the Honky Tonk Man. Uh, but those are just some of the highlights of that mania. Some additional matches on this card. We'll just kind of run it down. You had the Can-Am connection against uh, Bob Orton and the Magnificent Morocco. Uh, a six-man tag with the Hillbilly Jim teaming up with the uh, uh, Haiti Kid and Little Beaver. Yes, the dwarfs. Going up against King Kong Bundy, Little Tokyo, and Lord Littlebrook. But I remember most about this match is where like King Kong Bundy like dropped an elbow on one of the dwarves, and it was just like it, it was like not trying to be mean, but it was like the kind of funny, but also kind of like holy shit, I, he he just did that. It's like okay, <laughs> I hope he's okay. <laughs> I hope he's okay. But I kind of chuckled a little bit. Um, you also had the Dream Team going up against the Rougeau Brothers. Uh, six-man tag with your tag team champions, the Hart Foundation and Dangerous Danny Davis against Tito Santana and the British Bulldogs. Uh, you also had the Natural Butch Reed against Coco Beware on this card. And the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Folkoff against the Killer Bees in tag team action. But that was pretty much uh, WrestleMania 3. But we mentioned earlier the rise of Macho Man Randy Savage. And we'd see that next year at WrestleMania 4. Four, which would emanate live from Trump Plaza uh, in uh, beautiful Atlantic City, New Jersey. But uh, I oh, like uh, Trump Plaza is interesting because it would be the host of the next two WrestleManias. And that was like really kind of starting the relationship between Vince McMahon and Donald Trump, um, which would go on throughout the years and say what you will about Trump and Vince or whatever. That's another story and another can of worms for another time. But still, I mean, hey. Week, I mean, WWE was deemed a, uh, gosh, what was the term? Essential business? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So, yep. Thank you, President Trump. And it was the only uh, consecutive back-to-back -back venues. That's true. First time mm -hmm. that, and the only time that's ever happened. Um, also, too, of note was interesting. So, uh, the NWA uh, was it went to bat with uh, the WWF on this day because they would also have against going up against WrestleMania four was the very first ever Clash of the Champions, which was actually available on network or on uh, TBS on cable television. Uh, of course, we all know that Clash was Sting against um, Ric Flair in that forty five minute classic. But yeah, WrestleMania four was all about the WWF title. Because storyline-wise, what had happened is Andre the Giant and um, had defeated had defeated Hulk Hogan on an episode of the main event, which interestingly enough was actually for Market Square Arena, by the way. So it was in our neck of the woods. Um, but the the storyline was pretty much the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase was paying Andre the Giant to buy the WWF Championship, and Andre would win the match, but in controversial fashion, as there was two exact looking referees. It was Dave and Earl Hebner, folks. But yeah. I loved how Hulk Hogan was like afterwards, like doing his promos, like, oh, the, the multi million dollar man, brother. He must have paid paid somebody to be get the plastic surgery, dude. It's yep. just like, oh, <laughs> who, who, who paid for the plastic surgery? <laughs> Like, no, they're just they're just twin brothers, dude. Come on, you could have come up with a better fucking excuse. <laughs> come on, Hogan. Come on, Hogan. Jeez. So, anyways, uh, so that led to the WWF uh, vacating the title and putting it up for the very first time ever in a elimination tournament. So it was a fourteen man elimination tournament. Uh, the reason for that is because Hulk and Andre would actually get buys into the second round so pretty much this is how the tournament went out in your first round matches you would have the million dollar man ted dibiase against hacksaw jim duggan the rock dom morocco going up against dino bravo the canadian strong man uh you'd also have the macho man randy savage going up against the natural butch reed Ricky the Dragon Steamboat going up against Greg the Hammer Valentine. Bam Bam Bigelow against the One Man Gang. And Jake the Snake Roberts against Ravishing Rick Rude. 
Uh, now, the way the tournament went on is DiBiase would advance, so would Don Morocco. They would meet in the second round, uh, along with Hogan and Andre, of course, meeting. And then you had Savage advancing, and he would go on to meet Greg the Hammer Fountain, who went over on uh, Steamboat. And the one-man gang beat Bam Bam Bigelow and actually got a bye because Jake the Snake and Ravishing Rick Rude went the 15-minute time limit. So then you had Savage go on to defeat Valentine and would go on to the semis to face one man gang. DiBiase would beat Morocco. And then Hogan and Andre would end at a double DQ, essentially, uh, and thus giving the million dollar man a bye to the finals. Mm -hmm. And the Macho Man would defeat one man gang. And thus the finals was set between the Macho Man, Randy Savage, and Ted DiBiase. There's your story right there, bro, folks. You got the Ted DiBiase who's been trying to buy the WWF title. Now it's like here he is in the finals. And then how about like the million or how about Macho Man Randy Savage finally being like it's like at this point it's been nothing but Hogan as the as the top baby face in the scene. And here you go. You got this new baby face. And by God, the Macho really? Man would get his moment. I mean, it's what put him on the map, really. Yeah. Um, and it was interesting to note, too, if you look back on this, each one of the matches him and Elizabeth each have different attire on that they come out because that's just yep. how Randy Savage rolled. Yep. Mm -hmm. True story. Very particular about his appearance. Yes. Yes. And then of course, also this would be the first time where the mega powers would really kind of quote unquote be born uh, with hmm. the macho man and um, Hulk Hogan. Um, there's some other matches of significance on this card as well, because this was a loaded card. It wasn't just the tournament. Uh, it kicked off with a 20-man battle royal. Now, Bad News Brown would win the battle royal, but what I find interesting to note is in the finals of that battle royal was Bret Hart. So here you have the first two. Here's a little bullshit trivia for you. Bret Hart was the final combatant in the very first two battle royals in WrestleMania history. Didn't win it but he was the final combatant. But what was interesting is at the end of it, um, they gave out this big trophy to the winner of it, right? And Bret Hart pissed off because he got screwed over by Bad News Brown, ended up destroying the trophy pretty much. Um, and thus he would go on to um, uh, turn on to be a baby face after that, really. And well, the rest, they say, is history. And we'll be talking a lot about Bret tonight, too. And it's interesting to see his evolution in WrestleMania. And so, hey, yo, Free Talk uh, Wrestling, what's up? Um, you can catch Free Talk Wrestling live here on Pan Wrestling Company on Tuesday nights, I do believe, from 9 to 11. I believe you are correct, sir. Thanks for checking us out. Um, but, yeah, also on this card, you have the Ultimate Warrior against Hercules uh, for the WWF uh, oh. tag team. Oh, there it is. <laughs> You quit hitting that button, sir. No. Uh, 10 to 12. So there 10 you go. to 12. Would you uh, let me do my job? I will. I'll just sit here and talk and look pretty. <laughs> um, uh, so anyway, so, so WWF uh, tag team titles would be on the line with Strike Force going against Demolition and thus Demolition winning their first tag team titles. Uh, and it was at WrestleMania 4. The Intercontinental title would be on the line, too, as well, with Honky Tonk Man defending against uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake. But, yeah. And some of your celebrities at WrestleMania we got to talk about. Um, one of my favorites is, like, Bob Euchre. Like, we forgot to mention him, but Bob Euchre was at WrestleMania 3 and WrestleMania 4. He, just hilarious. There's an amazing interview with he does with Andre the Giant. And like Andre goes to choke him, and just the way Euchre is selling is amazing because he's just like, ah, it's awesome. Um, Fanna White was at this WrestleMania, as well as um, the uh, lifestyles of the rich and famous. Is um, um, I can't think of that guy's name all of a sudden, but yeah, My that guy's Leach. Robin Leach, thank you. There mm -hmm. we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but WrestleMania, that was WrestleMania 4. We got to talk about WrestleMania 5. Returning back to the Trump Plaza, but the mega powers would explode. So that was like the big build for this was it was Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage. So here you have pretty much the top two baby faces. And you just turn Savage heel on that infamous Saturday night's main event segment. 
Um, and I, man, I remember that like it was yesterday too, as like a little kid. Like, yeah. but just the macho man saying, "You got lust for Elizabeth." Me it's in your eyes, brother. Lust in your eyes. So yeah. And then, um, yeah, this epic, epic showdown. Um, I mean, what a main event! Like you talk about two of the biggest stars of that era. Uh, it doesn't get much bigger than that, you know, and it gets solidified by having a WrestleMania main event. I mean, it's Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage. I mean, these guys transcend just being professional wrestlers as like just names that are known in like pop culture in general, man. It's like the king, slim... they're the kings of it. Yeah, it's like Slim Jim versus like, um, I don't know, um, Speed Stick or that right guard that Hogan used to like do the commercial for back in the day <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh but and the story in this line too was like with with elizabeth was a big part of it because it was like elizabeth was went out when she was going to be in both men's corners and yeah that did not go well uh with the macho man just pretty much chasing her off but ultimately the hulkster would get the shine here and would win back the wwf title which the macho man would hold for that whole year from wrestlemania 4 to WrestleMania 5. And speaking of title changes on this one as well, you also had uh, the Intercontinental Championship was up for grabs, and Ravishing Rick Rude would, believe it or not, win the Intercontinental Championship from the Ultimate Warrior. And what was interesting about this is this was actually like uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan's um, first wrestler that actually um, won from the Heenan family that won a championship. So, yeah. But um, that was another big moment. I'll tell you another one I remember from this Mania, too. How about this interesting matchup? Andre the Giant against Jake the Snake Roberts with Big John Stud as your referee. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. like, um, okay. like, I, I, But the storyline was pretty interesting at the time because it was like, you know, this big menacing giant who, like, destroys people is not afraid of anything, but by God, he was afraid of snakes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah a uh, couple of the highlights there from wrestlemania um also this wrestlemania would see the debut of several future talents in the wwf uh, one of them being the future mr wrestlemania himself Shawn michaels this would be his first wrestlemania as he teamed up with uh, marty Jannetty to take on the twin towers akeem and the big boss man uh, and boy, you know what? This is actually a really fun tag team matchup because you got the high flyers against the powerhouse, the beasts, the studs, if you will. Uh, and it's really a clash of styles, but it's a very good outing uh, for Shawn Michaels and the big boss man making their WrestleMania debuts. Uh, another two some making their WrestleMania's debuts was Mr. Perfect and Owen Hart. Uh, as Mr. Perfect would take on Owen Hart's persona in the 80s, the Blue Blazer. Um, would be another matchup on this card. Uh, also, you had Hercules go up against King Haku. Brutus the Barber Beefcake against the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase. Um, you had, how about this handicap match for the WAF Tag Team titles? Demolition going up against the Powers of Pain and Mr. Fuji. You know, the, Mr. Fuji, of course, turning on Demolition uh, several months earlier and thus joining up with the Powers of Pain. Um, but yeah, you had Mr. Fuji. I remember like also too, I think they were showing like Mr. Fuji training for this event. And it was just like he was doing like a 5K or some shit, but he was still in like his Mr. Fuji, like the suit and the hat and the cane attire. It was just like, it was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I love me some Mr. Fuji. <laughs> um, also, you had the Bushwhackers go up against the Fabulous Rougeos on this card. Uh, Dino Bravo against Rugged Ronnie Garvin. Tell you, this match is a good one. Don't sleep on this one. The Brain Busters against Strike Force. Um, what was interesting about this one is actually this would be the breakup of Strike Force as Rick Martel would pretty much walk out on his partner, uh, Tito Santana. Um, also, Bad News Brown against Hacksaw Jim Duggan was on this WrestleMania. You had uh, the Hart Foundation go up against Greg Valentine and the Honky Tonk Man. And how about this one? The Red Rooster, yes, Terry Taylor, going against Bobby the Brain Heenan. I think there's like a total of 14 matches on this card. This is when like Mania is getting like, damn, dude. There's there's a lot of lot of <laughs> a lot of matches on here, and 
So, yeah. How to get everybody. I think we got Brian's back with us again. Are you there, Brian? In audio, yes, maybe. Yay. Let's hurry. Yes, we can. We can. We can hear you. Um, and that's the most important thing. So, and I can let's hear rock, you guys because on the other and, computer I couldn't. It's all let's, good, brother. Let's let's rock and roll, baby. We are on WrestleMania Five. The superpowers explode. The mega powers explode, brother. Ooh, hey, yeah. I was gonna say at the beginning when before all this technical crap happened. Now I'm gonna do like the leg drop of doom, brother, brother on the computer. But I was going to come on and say, he says, Panda's the boss. I was going to say, hey, listen, I, I want, I have a few perks. I want full creative control, brother, brother. I want the finest meats and cheeses, brother, brother. I don't job to anybody, brother, brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done with that role now. Anyway, there you go. go. Ahead. <laughs> it's, it's some fair demands, but uh, demands nonetheless. Would a Slim Jim suffice? Uh, that could work. Okay. okay. I would hope yeah, so. I could dig this. <laughs> Well, uh, hey, WrestleMania 5, we're already halfway through these. Can you believe it? But hey, as always, when we get to halfway point of our show, what do we do? A little plug a palooza. And Brian, I know from a developmentally speaking, you, you've kind of got some prior engagements. It's got to get going here. But uh, to start this off, once again, why don't you give us a little plug a palooza for yourself, sir? Well, thank you. I, I host the podcast, Developmentally Speaking, on YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe to that channel, please. We'll be forever grateful. We cover the developmental territories. We cover WOW, GLOW, the NWA. We have a partnership with them. We have a partnership with WOW out of LA. And we try to cover as much wrestling as we possibly can, from developmental to we even cover the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. And then connecting through wrestling is where we we talk with all people from all walks of life. We just filmed with the Berserker today. It'll be released on Friday. So just all your support. We truly appreciate. Tomorrow is a new episode of Developmentally Speaking with Brad Allen, also known as Brad Attitude from FCW. So it's a good one. It's about an hour long. Uh, It's one of our better episodes that we've done, and I've learned as we go, more people are wanting to come on. So there is bigger interviews coming. We just had one with Brad Maddox, and Brad has not done an interview in over seven years, so we we got to sit down with him exclusively. So there's a lot of good stuff happening over on our channel, and I appreciate you guys letting me come on tonight and talk a little bit and uh, plug my show. Absolutely, my friend. And, yeah, y'all, seriously, if you're not checking out, like, Developmentally Speaking and their channel, what's wrong with you? You got to go check it out. I mean, they had they actually got mentioned and name dropped in Wrestling Inc. with that Brad Maddox interview, which I mean, that's huge. Uh, that's and a, kudos to my guys, right there. Yeah, thank you. But I mean, and like you're saying, Brad Maddox, you know, like he hasn't done an interview in what over five, six, seven years, however long it's been. Mm-hmm. And you were the fir- you were the guys to get him. So I mean, that's awesome. And it's There's a very a interesting ex- interview. Thank you, I appreciate that. There's a lot more. Uh, interviews coming out uh, of that Brad Maddox caliber. So with all with everybody's support, more people, you know, we get this brand growing. We can deliver those exclusive interviews. Yep, as like he said earlier, on the road to seven hundred. Let's let's uh let's make it a personal goal to get him there before WrestleMania. Let's go. And we know you're going to have you. a lot of content for WrestleMania week two because you're mm-hmm. heading out to L.A. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm I'm trying to pull some strings uh, and make it a very eventful weekend for myself and my brand. So hopefully you guys get to see uh, uh, some WWE superstars on there, some behind-the-scenes stuff. I'll see what all I can get done that weekend. It's going to be an awesome time, man. Well, we thank you so much for joining us here tonight. We know you got a lot of stuff going on, but definitely check out Developmentally Speaking in their YouTube channel. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Oh, we appreciate having you, my friend. Yeah. Have a you good have, one. You have a good you one, too. my friend. All right. And also, we got to talk about our YouTube channel as well, right? Cole TV. So what do we got cooking this week? Well, we got a brand new episode of our popular show, The Hunt, will air this Wednesday. It's where I go to one of my favorite comic book shops around called Comic Book University. And I'm not alone. I take my dad, my daddy-o. 
goes to check out a comic shop with me. And we had a pretty good time checking it out. You're going to have to check it out on Wednesday. On Thursday, catch a replay of this show. And on Friday, or sometime at the end of the week, you're going to catch our AEW Revolution prediction show. Because Revolution is right around the corner. And hey, speaking of which, we didn't announce this earlier. But next week, Learn the Ropes. We're going to do our very first watch along. That's right, because it is going to be the Revolution watch along. As you all know, we always do these watch alongs here on the PWC. So there's going to be all sorts of guests coming on. It'll be a good old time. That's right. Finally, finally, one finally falls on a Sunday. Yeah. Which is so weird to me because pay-per-views were always on Sundays. And now it's like we're all on Saturday now. So go figure. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's probably going to be a late one. Um it but it will um it will be um good for sure who knows we may even end up doing it um we may be together who knows um who knows um who knows uh, i hope you i hope i hope you have snacks so because yes punch and pie for everybody yeah thank you feldy 23 for following appreciate you most most definitely for following and then also uh, Brian's House of Random. <coughs> oh, excuse me. We know you have your own, um, I believe, YouTube as well. Why don't you go ahead and plug uh, yes. some of your stuff? All right. Well, uh, of course, got the TikTok account at, I think last time I looked, I'm at 814 followers. And uh, which, by the way, speaking of that with XL. Uh, Jay, the OG, oh, the original gangster like New Jack, cock, cock, throwing up the X. And uh, there you go. Uh, Hambone, our good friend, he talks about in, in his Stitch videos of me, he'll say, man, of course, he goes a little profanity to lace. And I'll keep it clean here. But he'll say, man, why is he not a thousand yet? I can't believe he's not a thousand yet. Talking about me. I wonder the same about you, XL. And I'm hoping that you get there. I, honestly, if you get there before me, I'll be just as happy. But I hope we both can get there ASAP. We'll get there in due time, yeah. my friend. Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna lie. I was. I was literally thinking about you know that you know today and mm-hmm. like I'm just about at the point where I'm gonna start making daily videos of like get these two people up to a thousand. Um, yeah. Yeah. You gonna do like a Lex Express campaign for us, pretty much? <laughs> <laughs> get the red, white, and blue shirts going. I want you to go follow Brian's House of Random and XLJ the OG on TikTok. Do it for your country. Yeah. Yep. Or, or you're not a real American. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, I uh, got the TikTok account and got the same thing on YouTube. Which uh, TikTok's my primary right now. I get to do some my stuff I used to do before wrestling, which was a lot of music skits. I try to fit those in sometimes, but time's been kind of hard pressed with working full time and in a part time job on the side and stuff. Uh, but I try to get those in when I can. And uh, of course, the wrestling questions primarily on TikTok, all the other stuff I do on YouTube, Facebook and Inst- the Facebook reels and on Instagram as well. Uh, but the primary thing, like I said, right now is the major content is the daily stuff I'm getting to do here or get to do on TikTok with the wrestling questions and got to wrap up the timeline series that I had for WWF slash WWE history. We wrapped up with, uh, I gave NXT its own week last week because there's so much good stuff there. Um, I'm not, I don't want to spoil this week too much. Uh, not sure if I'm going to move to something else or if I want to do another timeline series, maybe a couple weeks worth for like maybe some older promotions, maybe where we look at, uh, the same kind of stuff as far as like tag teams on Tuesdays and stuff. Still kind of, I've got my notes all together, but just kind of trying to decide what to do for this coming week. And so that'd be pretty yeah. cool. Be like there tag team go. Tuesday, Woman Wednesday, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There you go. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I mean, folks, as you you see, I mean, he's putting in the work. So make sure you I'll go give that, that give that man um, a follow, and you know. We appreciate you coming on tonight yeah. so um, so much. I mean, you've got the John Cena gimmick going because you know. Yeah, you exactly. Can't you can't see, see me. <laughs> yeah, I got. I'm hitting the five. I'm going to. Speaking of that, I'm going to hit the five knuckle shuffle of doom on my or five moves of doom on the old computer. 
So hey, what the hell? You just said oh. doom. I used to be tag team partners with Butch Reed. I want to know why the hell I ain't on the first plug of Palooza or the second one, huh? What the hell? You done with me? You ain't gonna have me on the show anymore? You too good for me? What the hell's going on here, B-Roll? You and me got Ron. some beef, boy. And I told Ron. you I was gonna beat that ass. And now Ron. you're not letting me come on my show? Come on your show? I see how it is, boy. I'm a Hall of Famer. I was a runner-up in the Heisman Trophy, okay? I want to know why the hell I ain't on your damn show anymore. Okay, Ron, as as you know, we are in contract negotiations right now. But contract, what I, contract. What I can tell you is how would you feel about coming with me and XLJ, the OG, to Squared Circle Expo and maybe doing some autographs? I'll see how it is. You want me to get some people to draw to your table, just like I bring people to your show here on Sunday nights, but you don't appreciate me, boy? We'll talk about Ron, it. Ron, it's we'll all talk. in the negotiations. You will be paid very handsomely. You're damn right I will. Damn right I will. All right. That's all I've got to say for now. Good show, boy. Thank you, Ron, I think. Yeah, we're going to have to figure that one out. <laughs> he sounded he pretty like angry. You. I don't know why. He's <laughs> pissed at you. I think he's still mad because you like were running late for that one show that one time. Ever. Man, and he... Ever since, and then we drug him to a, um, a yeah, like death, death match. match. It's just like, oh. like he just he has not. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. My, and my dog tried to eat him too. So, <laughs> I guess I can understand why he's pissed. But, <laughs> anyways. Oh, <laughs> uh, hey! One thing I forgot I wanted to do real quick, and we're gonna get right back into our WrestleMania talk here, folks. But, um. We had an episode, one of our episodes of The Hunt, which was uh, kicked off our season two on Cole TV. And we one of the places we went to was this awesome place called Kokomo Toys. Well, we have three giveaways from Kokomo Toys. That's right. This is an exclusive Kokomo Toys made action figure. It's Alien Warrior. Still sealed. And you can win this. All you have to do is just make a comment tonight here in the comments. Just say, I heart Cole TV. It's as easy as that, and you'll get entered to win one of these three collectibles. we got three we're giving away. So just make the comment here tonight, I heart Cole TV. There you go. Uh, and so we're doing that for just one of them, right? Or is that for all all three of them? Hey, we're doing it all three of them, baby, because yeah. uh, we're going to put them all together on our YouTube, the Tiki Talks, and okay. here, okay. and we're going to draw a winner there. So once again, all you got to say, I heart Cole TV. There you go. Our buddy, Best Gout Machine. Hope Froggy Omega's doing fine tonight, sir. Yeah. I, I hope Froggy Omega's not in the same type of mood that Ron was in. But, <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. mean, I mean, but speaking of, you know, let's talk, you know, I, where I thought you were going with that is, you know, exclusively, exclusively here um, on the uh, Panda Wrestling Company uh, Twitch channel and then also on uh, Cole TV. Um, we did get to do a interview with yes. um, Impact Wrestling's Jay Vidal. Um, super honored and privileged about that. If you have not had a chance to go check out that interview yet, um, catch the replay um, here. Um, it aired right before the um, Wrestle Talk Wolf Pack. Um, so you just go to that one, or it's also available over on our YouTube channel, um, Cold TV, um, yeah. available as well. Uh, and seriously, we got to thank all of you folks for spreading the word because it worked, man. It was yeah. our, it's still mind boggling to talk about this. It was our highest rated video we've ever had. Yeah. Our like, most, it's insane. Uh, we thought we would do decent, but my gosh, what we got was incredible. Like, and just yep. all the people now who are subscribing and stuff and are aware of cold TV. But at the end yep. of the day, folks, it's because of you people. So thank yep. you guys and gals for checking out the interview. Uh, making your comments it, it was awesome and it is an awesome interview and you should definitely check it out if you haven't already yeah and then i would also say i mean if you have not checked out um impacts uh, no surrender yet and you uh have avoided spoilers like i would yeah. i would definitely go ahead and um make sure you go check it out like for sure yeah yeah absolutely Oh, do we got we got you, do we got your pretty face now too and audio? Yeah, pretty face is audio. Yay! Working? Yes, beautiful. Oh, 
Fantastic. A lot more patient than me. I was over here about to punch this stupid computer, and I was like, oh, I'm going to give you credit. It's hole fool. That's old, old <laughs> teacher reference I can explain. <laughs> but uh, uh, I was going with Mr. Byers on that, that whole deal there, and uh, she was over there tinkering with it while I had the audio on her computer. So thank you to her for MDB's crafts, by the way. That's her. Uh, yeah. For all your craft needs, yes. And uh, you can check her out there. Find her on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram. And tell her, tell them, tell whoever, Brian's House of Random sent you, something like that. Yeah, I'll get my bearings about me again. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I'm going to totally, totally, totally get off topic, but does she make stickers? Does she make stickers? B-Roll's asking, yes. Yeah, she gives me the head nod of approval. Like well, decals for vehicles? Well, we may have to be in contact. Okay. We may have some ideas. More. I might have some ideas. So she's w- re- so shooting that way to her and boom. Like, or me, either one. And yeah, we'll make it happen. Yeah, we'll talk to you. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So we're talking All WrestleMania. Right. Let's get right back into it and let's go to. The very first WrestleMania that was held outside of the United States. We're going to the Sky Dome, baby. WrestleMania 6. And my God, what a mega matchup this was. And still referred to as one of the greatest main events in all of WrestleMania history. And it almost didn't happen, believe it or not. Uh, Of course, the main event we're talking about is champion versus champion. Title for title. Top babyface versus top babyface for babyface superiority in the WWF, Hulk Hogan against the Ultimate Warrior. And this still to this day, it's crazy too, because these guys aren't known for having like the greatest matches, but it's like, I don't know, man. It was like opposites of track. You put them together. They had a hell of a good match, which people still talk about and watch this day. I mean, it's still referred to as like one of the wrestle- greatest WrestleMania main events of all time. And you also had like the shocking ending where Hulk Hogan actually puts over somebody and like puts over the ultimate warrior. Like the finish of this match is crazy if you think about it and put yourself in that time frame. Because I think there was a lot of us kids, myself included, was kind of like in the warriors camp and was just like, we liked Hulk Hogan, but it was like we wanted to see like something new, you know, because we'd seen Hulk Hogan for the past five years, essentially. Well, I mean, plus, I mean, the the Ultimate Warrior wasn't he? He was like from outer space or something, right? Like, yes. And the promos for this, the buildup was incredible. Like, uh, in the stratosphere, into the cockpit, Hulk Hogan. It sounded like he was in Cocaineville or something. Oh well, that that was every day, but yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just this matchup alone, man. Just grandiose in every sense of the way. Um, the so many iconic images from this WrestleMania from that main event, too. But it almost didn't happen, though. You know, they were actually entertaining the thought of having Hulk Hogan defend the WWF title against Seuss at this WrestleMania. Holy that shit. Horrible. That would have maybe like been the last WrestleMania. Uh, ever if they did that, <laughs> uh, and people oh, yeah. about David Arquette being a world champion at WCW. Imagine if they would have went with that match and if they would put the belt on Zeus, uh, you would have seen everything with David Arquette probably times five or ten, bef- like years before. That's crazy. Yeah, I and I don't get me wrong, man. I love me some Tommy Tiny Lister, like the, the late great RIP. Um, but man, yeah, that just would not have worked at all. Yeah, oh, exactly. That, that that would have been that would have been a rough one <laughs> to say the <laughs> least. Uh the other thing of notoriety from this WrestleMania is this would actually be the last uh WrestleMania and last in ring match at least at a major scale uh for one of the all-time greats Andre the Giant. This would be his last uh, in ring performance now he did wrestle in japan a couple times after this but this was pretty much his like retirement match essentially Mm -hmm. as it was him and uh haku the colossal connection defending their wwf tag team titles against demolition and of course demolition would win the belts but this is known for at the end where bobby heenan's like 
turning on Andre, kind of smacks him around, and Andre like pretty much just chokes him and thus becomes like babyface one last time and leaves the ring on one of the little WrestleMania cards, which they should still do the WrestleMania cards. Can we talk about that for a minute? Like, I want them to bring back the WrestleMania card, damn it. Like, that would be great. That would be awesome. It needs to be you know, done. If they don't do it this year, why don't they do it? If they don't do it this year, why don't they do it next year for WrestleMania 40? But that being such a big, you know, milestone, that'd be so cool. Even if they did it for one match, if yeah. not the whole event. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially because the damn entranceway is so fucking long to begin with. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like two football fields or something, you know? It's like, come on, man. Like, you know, let them get a ride to the ring. It's okay. Yep. Hashtag bring back the WrestleMania cart. Yes, yes. Let's get that movement going. <laughs> it needs to happen. And um, yes, uh, Celtic destroy. We got to mention that the macho King, Randy Savage. Um, oh yeah, that's right. They did do him in the SmackDown games. I forgot about that. Uh, that was pretty cool on like the legends entrances and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but no, we got to talk about the macho King, Randy Savage. Uh, he was involved in a milestone at this WrestleMania as well, as it would be the very first ever mixed tag team match where him and Queen Sherry would go up against the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and Sweet Daffa! That's right. Uh, not not a great matchup by any means, especially like God rest her soul, Sapphire. Not a whole lot she could really do, but, you know, she brought the en- energy, I suppose. Um, but also kind of uh, going into the storyline with the Macho Man, uh, Miss Elizabeth would actually be revealed to be in the corner of uh, Sweet Sapphire and Dusty Rhodes in this matchup as well. Uh, but this is not one of those manias where it's just got a shit ton of matches, a total of 15 matches on it. Let's run down the rest of them, shall we? Uh, Rick the Model Martell against Coco Beware in your opening matchup. Uh, the Canadian Earthquake against Hercules, or I guess at this point he was Earthquake, even though it was in Canada, but whatever. Um, <laughs> Brutus the Barber Beefcake against Mr. Perfect. And actually, here's an interesting footnote. Uh, Brutus Beefcake would be the very first wrestler to ever pin Mr. Perfect in the WWF. Um, you also had, oh boy, and I don't think this is on Peacock, folks, for obvious reasons. <laughs> Rowdy Roddy Piper against Bad News Brown. And if you know, you know. Uh, but uh, the controversy. I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> spill the beans and hope we don't get kicked off Twitch tonight. So, Piper, and you got to keep in mind this is 1990. This is a different time frame, folks. So, Piper was kind of tying into the fact that um, Bad News Brown, his opponent, was um, or is African American. So Piper, half of his body was Roddy Piper. And I love how B-roll goes away right when I'm telling this story. But anyways. (laughs) I'm um, still here. Okay. And then the other half of Piper's body, yes, he would go blackface. Yeah, he would paint the other half of his body yep. black. It's like a symbolism, but it's just like, yeah, that does not hold up well at all by today's standards. Um, I mean, you may have had a different meaning for it, but yeah. But the buildup for the match and stuff was pretty cool. But yeah, this is unfortunately going to be one of those ones we don't talk about. It's it's like this match is the equivalent of like in like if you look at Walt Disney and they like they you'll never see the songs of the South. Like, same thing for this. You're never going to see Bad News Brown against Roddy Piper unless you got a VHS copy or something. Yeah, exactly. And it was crazy because you think, you know, Piper probably had a hand in it, maybe. But then again, you think, who had the final say? Vince. Oh, yeah. I'm sure Vince was looking at, oh, that's good shit, pal. <laughs> oh, pal, we got to do it. It's so good. <laughs> that's it great. Like, well, no. We'll play right into it. The race card. It's fun. It's like, no, everybody no, will love it. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's like, no, no fence, no, bad fence. Yeah, it's bad. Like Vince, you got to realize that that's not good. Yeah, no, it's not good at all. Um, <laughs> I, Ron. Damn! Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it was pretty bad. <laughs> Anyways, uh, other matches on this card. The Hart Foundation against the Bolsheviks. The Barbarian against Tito Santana. 
the Orient Express against the Rockers as we continue on with the <laughs> race card era of the WWF. But uh, it was what it was. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan against Dino Bravo. Oh, uh, oh, the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase against Jake the Snake Roberts and not an ordinary match. No, no, no. A match for the million dollar championship. Uh, how about this? A former tag team partner is going at it. The big boss man against Akeem. And Akeem, Ravish Boom. Akeem, the African dream. Oh, God. But once again, like we're just <laughs> we're going down a rabbit hole of bad, racial, <laughs> terrible gimmicks. Fucking Orient Express, the Brody Piper incident, Akeem. Oh, hey, but Akeem played it well. One man. Yeah, because all he did was this. Well. Yeah, he hit the. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and like, I loved his entrance song, by the way. Oh yeah, I mean, slick like coming into uh, uh, jive bro awesome. slow or whatever. Yep. Yeah, he's a jab bro slow, a jab bro slow. <laughs> and it needs, yeah, something. <laughs> oh, love me some slick, man. Uh, but yeah, rounding out this card, ravishing recruit against Jimmy Superfly Snuka. Uh, another little tidbit of information. Uh, a lot of people may know this, may not, but the Diamond Dallas Page uh, first appearance at a WrestleMania was on this card, too, as he would be the driver and owner of the pink Cadillac that the Honky Tonk Man uh, came to down at ringside. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. I'm, I mean, I feel like this episode has just been full, there. Of, <laughs> full, full of... Uh, you know, you could win a drink at a bar with this with this bet. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But uh, Miss Mania mainly known for the Hulk and uh, the Hogan, or, or I'm sorry, the the Hogan and the Warrior matchup and the passing of the guard there. Now, this next Mania, I gotta admit, is a guilty pleasure of mine because it is probably like one of it's probably my favorite WrestleMania from this era. I want to talk about WrestleMania. Seven, okay and this this is a loaded card um in my opinion i love this card this is like to me honestly man wrestlemania 7 you know you talk about the beginning of airs and the end of the airs like to me this is the wrestlemania this is like the last true like show of the air of like that i grew up as a little child with like hogan and warrior and savage and all these guys now granted they would go on and have long careers and stuff but this to me kind of felt like the end the kind of like this is as good as it was going to get you know K kind of like how people refer to wrestlemania 17 as the end of the attitude air that's kind of what this wrestlemania is for me but one of the most interesting aspects i find with this wrestlemania is the controversy coming from the main event and, and wwe or wwf at the times what they did as far as like talking about like not having to change venues because originally this was supposed to be held at the la sports coliseum matter of fact i got a little something i want to show you so i got an issue here of wwf magazine like from the 90s and check this out so you can see there's an advertisement here and like you can actually mail in you can mail in your tickets i don't know if you can see that there at the bottom but if you notice, they're advertising for the Coliseum here still in 1990, right? Mm -hmm. But in the reality of the situation, they actually couldn't sell enough tickets. Uh, but storyline-wise, they blamed it on the Sergeant Slaughter uh, getting heat for his character because at the time, Sergeant Slaughter was the Iraqi sympathizer, so which the Gulf War was huge you know, here in 1991, right? So this, yeah. this WrestleMania was all about, like, Americana. Stars and stripes forever, brother. Um, but they supposedly, according to the WWF, they said, oh, we can't hold it there. It's too big of a venue because we're getting bomb threats and stuff. So they moved it to a small arena. But in reality of it is, they just hadn't had enough pre-sale tickets. But I always found that fascinating about this, uh, this WrestleMania. Because they'll still, to this day, like, I've heard, like, Sergeant Slaughter interviews and stuff, and he'll say the same shit. It's like, no, dude. That's not what happened, but <laughs> <laughs> but this WrestleMania uh, loaded undercard, loaded card, some great ma main event. Like, let's talk about the main event. Of course, I mentioned Sergeant Slaughter against Hulk Hogan for the WWF Championship. 
And uh, believe it or not, it's a pretty good matchup. I think like it's the storytelling's awesome. Cause it's just that stereotypical, like the evil, evil bad guy representing like the bad foreign country going against the American hero of Hulk Hogan. Um, there's they get a little bit of blood in this match too which was pretty rare back in the day for wwf because like you know that was all for crockett wcw like wwf yeah you couldn't get any juice brother but they they got some in this matchup and like some rare stuff happens in this matchup too like hulk hogan going to the top rope like okay he's delivering a double axe hand off the top rope but still crazy to think like hulk hogan going to the top rope and of course, uh, Hulk Hogan would win the WWF Championship at this WrestleMania. But, but the match of the night by far, and it's one of my all-time favorite WrestleMania matches, the what was billed at the time, the retirement matchup between Macho King, Randy Savage, and the Ultimate Warrior. The buildup for this was awesome. But the psychology of this matchup, and this is another one of those kind of matchups where you kind of have opposites attract. They actually have a hell of a matchup. Um, I think it goes about 20 minutes or so. But, like, there's parts, there's moments of this matchup I still, like, vividly remember to this day. Like, I'll never forget, like, when the Macho Man's pretty much got him beat and he delivers not one, not two, not three, not four, but five elbows off the top rope, right? And B roll to put it to you this way. I mean, back in the day when you delivered your finisher, that was it. You didn't kick out, let alone when you delivered a multitude of finishers. It's not like nowadays where that, well, I hate to say this, but we see that shit all the time. Yeah. So many like false this, finishes. Oh, yeah. With the storytelling here, because the Macho Man delivers those five elbows and he pins the warrior. Now, granted, when he pins him, he doesn't hook the leg, but this is part of the psychology of it. He just kind of drapes his arm over and the warrior barely kicks out and the macho man is just like what and the whole crowd's like holy shit like five elbow drops and the warrior is not going down it's just you knew you were seeing something special when this match happened uh and then the warrior would come back to hit his finisher he hooks the leg on savage and savage kicks out and then warrior just has this dazed look looking up like to the heavens just like Oh, is this my destiny? Like, I'm not supposed to win. Like, can I not pull this off or whatever? And of course, it ends up like he comes back into the match after Savage jumps him. Um, and there's some great moments that happen in between. But ultimately, the Ultimate Warrior would win this matchup and thus put the Macho King into retirement. But that's not where the real story is, like of one of the most iconic moments in all of WrestleMania history. So as we mentioned back and you look at WrestleMania five, that is really when like the macho man and Miss Elizabeth's um, relationship had come to an end, so to speak. So at the end of this matchup, Sherry is jumping the macho man and like kicking him while he's down and stuff. And what happens? Miss Elizabeth jumps the rail, gets rid of Sherry, saves the day and the macho man and Elizabeth get reunited in this thing of fucking beautiful storytelling all these years later. And I just, I'll never forget, like, when they were showing shots of the crowd of this as a kid, and there's, like, grown people, <laughs> like, crying, yeah. like, weeping, like, grown women, like, crying. And it's just, like, I remember there's this one lady who, and this is 91, folks, so you got to keep in mind, just, like, she's covered in, like, blue eyeshadow and stuff, pretty much, and just, like, it's all, the mascara is coming down her face, like, oh, I'm so happy. Fucking chef's kiss just a beautiful moment in wrestlemania history now was this one he also proposed to her at the same time i'm trying to no, they, that but that would later. be later that would be later okay. on in the summer he would yeah that's right because yeah. that would be elizabeth it's like the h was silent elizabeth. or not there. elizabeth oh yeah will you marry me oh yeah <laughs> by the way i saw somebody say on a uh, kind of unrelated note but kind of sort of that Randy Savage, if you took him in his prime, he's one of those you could put in any era, and he would have. I think he would have fit perfect. He would have fit in the Attitude Era somewhere, new generation. If you had him at twenty-five or thirty years old, and could like magically put him right now in current era with like Seth Rollins and all these guys in his gimmick, I mean, it would fit. He's one of those characters that I I feel could go to any era, any style of wrestling, and can make yeah, it work. I agree. 
Yeah, I totally agree with that. Wholeheartedly agree with yeah. that. Yeah, no doubt about it. So um, let's run down the rest of this card here of WrestleMania 7, which, like I say, I felt like was a loaded show. Um, interestingly enough, this is one I find of interest, and it's a great tag team match, too, by the way. The Hart Foundation defending their tag team championship against the Nasty Boys. Now, the Nasty Boys would actually defeat the Hart Foundation, but, yeah, buddy. Yeah, but, with the Bret Hart. <laughs> but I don't know what that was. <laughs> okay, go ahead, sorry. It's, it's, it's great is what it is. Um, but no, so, like, so the Hart Foundation would lose this matchup, but here's what I think is the significance of it. This would I'll be like, okay, Heart Foundation's been around for like the past five years or six years or whatever it has been. It's like, okay, it's time for Brett to go into singles career. And that's pretty much what happened after this. And you talk about like the WrestleMania legacy uh, of Bret Hart. He's very intertwined in these early WrestleManias too, but this would be like his last uh, match in part of the Hart Foundation at a WrestleMania. And, and like I say, it's actually a great tag match too as well. Uh and of course, we got to talk about this. You talk about legacies in WrestleMania. By God, they don't get any bigger than this. This is the very first WrestleMania that The Undertaker appears at. Mm -hmm. So the start of the streak is at WrestleMania 7 against all people, Superfly Jimmy Snuka, um, who he would defeat very soundly. Um, there were some other great storylines going on. Uh, this was a great storyline. But um, it's a shit match. And yeah, uh, Celtic Destroyer, you mentioned it. We got to talk about the blindfold match with Rick Martell and Jake the Snake Roberts. And yes, folks, literally, it's what it sounds like. It is both competitors are blindfolded. Um, so what do you do with that? <laughs> I mean, they can't see each other. It's interesting, like how they played to the crowd because Jake the Snake's like pointing in like corners and stuff, and like the crowd's like cheering when if it's right in the right corner where Martell is and stuff. But but the whole build up of this was like Rick Martell had um yeah it, it it's probably one of the worst ones I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, but the build up was great though because Rick Martell had taken his um his fragrance um arrogance. arrogance and had sprayed it in um jake the snake's eyes and caused him to be blind and yeah i don't know i'd have to look back i don't know if earl was the referee in this one or not that's a good point for some reason i feel like it was danny davis maybe but i could be wrong on that but um uh, but yeah the, so this matchup the build and stuff was great but just the gimmick match not so much but another great build too was how about this one um virgil finally coming out of the shadows of the million dollar man ted dibiase as he would meet ted dibiase uh in a one-on-one -on -one matchup at wrestlemania this year as well and you also had uh this is one of my personal favorites i love this matchup powerhouse versus powerhouse and i always thought these guys had great chemistry the british bulldog against the warlord uh in a in a good back and forth power matchup um but yeah, there, let's just run down the rest of the card. Um, the opener is really good on this WrestleMania. It's the Rockers against the Barbarian and Haku in a really fun tag team matchup. Uh, so pretty much Barbarian Haku, you know, the future faces of fear, right? You also had the Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Eric, going up against Dino Bravo. Uh, you had, how about this one? This is kind of a weird one. Demolition going up against a uh, Japanese great um tenru and koji katao um uh, i still like not sure why those two were featured on this card and gets demolition but it happened <laughs> um you also had the intercontinental championship was on the line with the big boss man against mr perfect uh earthquake going up against greg the hammer valentine in a very short matchup the legion of doom against the power and glory i just always remember the what about this one was the promo with LOD before the match? Because it was like Hawk was talking. He's like, it's power and glory, power and glory. After the match, your name will be sour and gory. And then, you know, what a rush. But I got a little tickle in my throat just by talking like Hawk there. <coughs> but <coughs> you also had the Mountie against uh, Tito Santana. Yeah, like I say, it was just a loaded card. 
It's a fun WrestleMania, I think. And I'm going to take a sip of water. Who doesn't love the Mountie? I'm the Mountie! And he had the shock stick. Yes, yes. And of course, you know he used the shocker in this WrestleMania. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Up next. <coughs> oh, man. I can't do Robo or Hawk. That really took it out of me. <coughs> Anyways, up next, let's talk about WrestleMania 8, where we go to our neck of the woods. And we're talking the Hoosier Dome, baby. That's right. Uh, we are in Indianapolis in the one and probably going to be the only WrestleMania uh, that <laughs> we ever get. But it's okay. Um, we can but, dream, right? <laughs> yeah, we can dream. We can dream. Um, oh, yeah. PCO coming from the yeah, as part of the Quebecers. And we're going to talk about them here in a couple minutes, too. <laughs> if I could ever stop coughing. Anyways, so this WrestleMania is controversial dome for that a lot of the lot going into it, and I mean it was even advertised beforehand. We thought we were finally going to get that dream matchup we've been clamoring to see for all these years. And that, of course, is the matchup between Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. You know, these two icons finally meeting one on one, right? Nope. That's not what we got. Supposedly, it's because Hogan and Flair weren't drawing in like house shows. I don't really know if that's the case or not, but it didn't happen. And unfortunately, instead, it was just like, you know what? What's the second best thing if we're not going to do Hogan and Flair? Oh, I know. Let's do Hogan and Sid Justice. That'll be some good shit. Mm -hmm. Double main (laughs) event so that Hogan could still technically be in the main event, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. And yeah, I think that's part of it, too. Yeah, Flair was it was yeah. really kind of a handshake deal. So, yeah. But yeah, I agree. Yeah, it was. Ugh, boy, what a shitty matchup this was. I mean, like, <laughs> I the only thing I remember about it was like Sid's promo at the beginning where he's like, or before the match, he's talking to Mean Gene. He's just like, they're asking about the legacy of Hulk Hogan. And he's just like, I don't give a damn about the legacy of Hulk Hogan. I curse you, Hulk Hogan. It's just like a uh, classic Sid. And like he didn't fumble his lines this time, folks. <laughs> yeah, we're we're live, pal. But speaking of fumbling, boy, the finish of this match got fucked up royally. So like Papa Shango uh, comes out to cause interference. But um, uh, yeah, but Papa Shango comes out way too early. And yeah, the territory days were crazy. Um, but ends up jumping the gun or doesn't get there in time. So they do a DQ finish. So Hogan wins, of course. And then the Ultimate Warrior makes his triumphant return to the World Wrestling Federation. And that's how the show pretty much closed was Hogan and Warrior posing in the Hoosier Dome. Eh, It is what it is. But there's some good matches on this card, folks. Because we do got to talk about the other part of that double main event. For your WWF Championship, the Nature Boy Ric Flair defending against the Macho Man Randy Savage. And the big storyline going into this one is supposedly uh, Ric Flair had had an affair with the Macho Man's wife, uh, Miss Elizabeth, years ago. Uh, obviously, that wasn't the case, but um, still, the, the storyline wise was just built around that. And it, it's a pretty good, decent matchup. It, it's not it's not as long as you think it would be i would say uh i think it goes like um well i'm reading minutes. it actually it goes longer than i thought it was 25 minutes for some reason i didn't feel like it was 25 minutes god sid and hogan was 18 minutes damn that was 18 minutes too long jesus yep um <laughs> yeah but anyways um so yeah they have a pretty decent matchup but i remember the big controversy about that this matchup was once again going back to the blood because I mean fuck you can't have like a Ric Flair match at a WrestleMania level and not have some juice in it, brother. I mean, come on. It's Ric Flair. But the controversy was is they were only going to do one spot the whole night, but there was a match earlier on the card, uh, which I want to talk about, which in my opinion I think is the best match on this card. It's for your Intercontinental Championship with Brett the Hitman Hart going up against Rowdy Roddy Piper uh for the IC title. And Bret Hart would get uh, cut in that matchup and um, Piper had to go back 
to bat pretty much saying like no we need this as part of the storytelling the match it's a very interesting matchup too because it's another one of those baby face versus baby face matches and you gotta keep in mind too like roddy piper is like cool hand luke you know like he just like he'd never been pinned but he actually would do the job for bret hart it's got a really good finish too because we're like piper's like kind of going through like you know he's a good guy but he's got these heelish cheating tendencies to him mm-hmm. and i'll never forget the call with uh bobby the brain heenan um where he's got the bell right he's gonna hit him with the bell and bobby heenan's like you know it's like the old saying goes what the hell use the bell <laughs> god i love bobby heenan <laughs> oh he was the best yeah uh but yeah so and then he's gonna use the bell puts the bell back gets uh brett in the sleeper hold his finisher and brett kicks off the ropes and thus uh one two three and bret hart wins the uh wins the Intercontinental title. So you have a new WWF champion, the Macho Man, and a new Intercontinental champion in Bret Hart. Now, I statistic, I know we got to get going. What was the statistic I saw one time about the thing with Macho Man and Ric Flair? Like, Macho Man, didn't he win the title two times in WWF mm-hmm. and beat Ric Flair both times and then lost to Ric Flair and then the same in WCW? Or was it, it was something where he... He won and lost to Ric Flair. It connected somehow. He WWE won, and so he WWE. won his second title from Flair, and he lost it yeah. back to Flair. Okay, and he won it. his second WCW title from Flair, yeah. and he lost it back to Flair. Okay, yeah. that's what that's the connection I was yeah. thinking of. Okay, it's thanks. Both, yeah, both his second runs, which is yeah, very interesting uh, tidbit uh, when you think about it. Uh, now another match we got to talk about on this card is we, we talk about the evolution of wrestlers. This was Shawn Michaels first, uh, singles match in a WrestleMania going up against El Matador, Tito Santana. And there's a tremendous opening matchup and Shawn Michaels will get the win over the, uh, future hall of famer. And it's a great opening matchup too. Uh, also look at, look at you putting over Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, how about this one? Uh, the Undertaker against Jake the Snake Roberts. Uh, and this was uh, controversial because Jake the Snake was kind of hogan up, uh, holding up the fence for money at this WrestleMania, pretty much. Um, but after this, he would be pretty much done with the WWF until he would return in 1996. Um, so, there's some interesting tidbits about that WrestleMania. Let's run down the rest of the card. Not nearly as many matches as these past couple ones we're looking at. Um, got to talk about the eight man tag match with the big boss man, Virgil, Sergeant Slaughter, and Hacksaw Jim Duggan against the Mountie, the Nasty Boys, and Repo Bad. Uh, Tatanka one on one against Rick the Model Martel. Uh, Owen Hart going up against Skinner. And for your WWF tag team titles, the Natural Disasters challenging Money Incorporated. Uh, also some interesting tidbits here, too. Uh, there's a couple WCW talents that would make their uh, on-screen debut at this show as well. Paul Ellering for the Legion of Doom, as well as uh, Lex Luger would be interviewed on uh, uh, by Bobby Heenan on this show as well. But I don't know, WrestleMania 8, it, it, it is what it is. It's one of those that's there. But guess what, folks? We're about to go from bad to worst. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and what many have dubbed... Probably the worst WrestleMania of all time, WrestleMania 9. Oh, dear God. This is a rough one, folks. So, talking about over the years, WrestleMania as being like a spectacle and stuff. I mean, that's definitely what this WrestleMania was all about. Because <laughs> it was it was big on, like, pageantry, right? So, um, oh, yeah. Giant oh, so Gonzalez. Yeah. But um, but we got to talk about it being in Las Vegas, Caesar's Palace, and like the, all of the commentators and everybody being dressed up like they were like back in the Roman times or whatever, right? <laughs> Which one of my favorite entrances is at the beginning of this when they're bringing out the announce team. Also, too, this is Jim Ross's first WWF show he ever called was WrestleMania 9. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they bring out Macho Man, then they bring out Bobby Heenan, once again to Bobby Heenan. And uh, I loved it. Like pretty much what happened was Heenan comes out on a camel. He's riding the camel backwards. Heenan falls off the camel. (laughs) Macho man in his infinite wisdom 
like Heenan's been over and he grabs his toga and shows Bobby Heenan's ass pretty much. And you can see he's wearing blue underwear and it's just fucking hilarious. And the macho man just looks dead center in the camera. He's like, it's fucking great. Oh, I remember marking out as a kid watching that, man. But uh, so this WrestleMania is mostly known for the double main event and the return of Hulk Hogan. Because at this time, mm-hmm. folks, we had kind of gotten away from that era of the WWF and we was kind of going towards the new generation and stuff, or thought we were. But boy, oh boy, you're talking about taking two steps forwards and ten steps back. That's what this fucking WrestleMania did. Mm-hmm. So your double main event, you have Money Incorporated going against um, Brutus the Barber Beefcake and Hulk Hogan, the returning Hulk Hogan, the, uh, the mega maniacs. Um, because, yeah, people were just clamoring to see Hogan and Beefcake go for the tag titles. That, that'll that put butts in seats. But um, <laughs> that ends up being a schmoz. But the big deal, the big controversy of the ending of the night. So the last match of the night. Uh, oh, yeah, the scalloping of Brutus. Yeah, and let's talk about this, too. This was a all classic tale in wrestling. Like, for years... So this WrestleMania, Hulk Hogan comes into it, is is notorious. If you see it, he's got like a black eye. He's working with a black guy. And they kind of play it off that the million dollar man had supposedly hired somebody to jump him the show the the night before, whatever. Now the legend and the rumor for years was the fact that supposedly the Macho Man and Hogan had got into it and Macho Man like punched him in the face and gave him black eye. Now, I think what really happened or what they said happened was Hulk Hogan was involved in like some type of a, a sailing accident or something that caused him to get a black eye. But it's it's up for interpretation of what the hell happened there. But let's talk about the main event. WWF Championship, Brett the Hitman Hart, you know, the leader of the new generation going up against the 500 pound Yoko Suna. The matchup itself is not that bad, actually. Like, it's a pretty decent matchup between Brett and Yoko. And I felt like Brett and Yoko always have really good chemistry. Mm-hmm. But it's the finish, folks. The fucking finish. So Bret Hart somehow miraculously gets Yoko Suna in the sharpshooter. Mr. Fuji throws salt in his eyes. Yoko drops the leg and wins the WWF title. And that's it, right? Okay, WrestleMania is done for. Um, yeah, I've never seen salt so powderly. I agree. <laughs> But here is what happened after Matt. Hulk Hogan comes out to save the day. And then Mr. Fuji, for unbeknownst reason to us, decides he's going to challenge Hulk Hogan to a match for his Yokosuna. And they'll put the WWF title on the line in what is one of the biggest bonehead calls. Maybe one of the biggest bonehead calls in all of sports since, I don't know, the fucking Seattle Seahawks decided to go for it in the Super Bowl. At the at the in the red zone, but Ulster gets in the ring, of course, does his thing and wins the WWF title, and we send everybody home happy, yay! But you talk about like using creative control. This is creative. This is Hogan's creative control to like a fucking T, man. Like, and supposedly, uh, I gotta get my shine, brother, brother. That's right. So supposedly, Hogan was supposed to do a program with um, Bret Hart. Um, at SummerSlam, but of course that fell through, and well, the rest they say is history. But uh, yeah, I think that's the biggest reason why this WrestleMania has a black eye. No pun intended. Um, let's run down the rest of the card because the beginning there's some really good matches. Uh, the Intercontinental Title was on the line with Tatanka against uh, Shawn Michaels in a really good opener. Um, uh, probably my favorite match on this card, man. You talk about like just big meaty men beating big meaty men. How about the head shrinkers against uh, the Steiner brothers? Yes. Uh, yeah, finger poke of doom for the WWF for sure. Awesome tag team matchup, though, with the Steiners and the head shrinkers. Um, we mentioned the Money Inc. match. There's some other matches on. The rest of the cards kind of end. There is a match between Lex Luger and uh, Mr. Perfect, which was okay. And it had some pretty good storytelling in the buildup. Now, say what you will. The match was shit, but I did enjoy the buildup between Crush and Doink the Clown. The evil Doink the Clown. Because like he had taken out Crush prior before. And the the finish of this match was funny because there was like two Doinks involved. And Bobby Heenan just on commentary once again being like, oh, it's an optical illusion. Why are you shaking your head, B-roll? 
No clowns. Especially uh, if there's two. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What's yeah, remember up, they were doing this? Yes. Yes. Uh, how about this WrestleMania classic? Bob Backlund and Razor Ramon. Said no one ever. But as as bad as the main event and all that was with the in the fallout, how about the worst match on the card, probably by far? The Undertaker against Giant Gonzalez. Yep. Fuck. That was brutal. Yeah, that's true. He did doink one year and would wrestle Macho Man the next year. Yeah. But uh, I think we've done enough talking about WrestleMania 9. Uh, let's close this Learning the Ropes episode out on a good note. And that's what we're going to do, folks, because let's talk about WrestleMania 10, one of my all-time favorite WrestleManias and probably one of the better WrestleManias of all time, in my opinion. Such a loaded show. And you have two of the all-time greatest matchups in WrestleMania history on this show. Now, the build-up to this show, it was you had, um, you ended up having the two winners of the Royal Rumble, like going to challenge for the WWE mm-hmm. title. So the so the storyline was, it's like, okay, they flip a coin to see who goes first and who goes second. So Luger won the coin toss. Luger would go first. Or did Brett win the toss? I don't know. Anyways, uh, Luger would pretty much face Yoko Suna first for the WF title. And then Bret Hart would get the winner of that matchup. But Bret Hart would not be uh, not. He wouldn't be wrestling just one time that night. No, he'd be wrestling two. In what is probably, in my opinion, the greatest opening match in WrestleMania history. The first brother versus brother match in WrestleMania history. Owen Hart versus Bret Hart. And at all time freaking classic it is one of the best opening like i say it's the best opening match in wrestlemania history it's one of the best matches in wrestlemania history yeah and i agree yeah if, we, if you don't get this show we don't get the real monday night raw and this show it really it really i think defines the new generation era of the wwf is wrestlemania 10 because like yeah, so much- if you think about this because this was the first real wrestlemania that hogan was gone you didn't yeah. have Hogan involved. No, you could yeah. really tell the change of the guard was there because he, I mean, I, I looked on, I know on Wikipedia, whatever, and just went through all the cards to see all the main events. And you can see Hogan was involved in one way or form or another through yeah. every event, yeah. except this one. And you could tell in a good way that he was gone. He was out of the way. And that way, Brett, Sean, all these people could move up the card and could show what they could do. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. there's no doubt about it, man. Yeah, honestly, you know, from my research out of the ones, you know, we've talked about tonight, this one was uh, my my uh, fate, definitely my favorite one that I uh, I checked uh, checked out. Um, Yeah. Yeah. The match between him and Owen is amazing. Technical masterpiece. Kisses. And then and, and really, it's not just, you know, even the fact that at you know, the end of it, you know, Bret Hart wins, but like when Owen comes out at the end. Yes. Like, it's Such like... great storytelling. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that. So Luger against Yoko Suna. Yoko goes over. Last match of the night, Bret against Yoko after Bret's already ha- suffered one of the biggest losses in his career, pretty much, to his little baby brother. And what happens? Bret wins the title. And all the locker room, the new generation, all the baby faces come out to celebrate with Bret. And there it is again. Big brother has taken the shine from little brother. It's just like, you son of a bitch. It's Mm -hmm. just like, I finally beat you and you go and take my moment and win the WWF title. And just the look of disdain on Owen Hart's face in that moment. God, rest in peace, Owen Hart. One of the greatest performers of all time. And this is like the pinnacle of like Owen Hart and just like such great storytelling. Like that opening matchup, you get the great storytelling, the build of brother and brother, and it delivers in the ring and it just continues on the story. My God. Oh, such good shit, literally. Yeah, Owen was freaking amazing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we're talking about that. Yes, stuff. He is somebody who should have had the WWF title. I, I, I will. On that hill, I mean, one of the I know to do the top five. That's the thing. Also, I was gonna say earlier about top five wrestling stuff. Top yep. five people who should have won the WWF slash WWE title at some point. Yeah, Jake the Snake's on there, but Owen Hart, 
I, and I remember there was that, uh, I know we got to wrap up here soon, but I know there was a house show picture or something. Owen holding that winged eagle. He should have had that winged eagle on his freaking waist year reign or however long. And you think yeah. about this too, you tie in WrestleMania 10 long-term storytelling, Brett beats Yoko. One year prior, of course, was role reversal. Yoko yeah. beating Brett for the title. Yeah. So that comes full circle as well. Yeah. Getting his shine back, so to speak. Absolutely. Yeah. But and with no Hogan and they made it even better. Yeah. 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 It's like this is what it should have been. But um with that being said, as great as that moment was, you gotta talk about the moment in the match that stole the show. It's that intercontinental title unification match, the ladder match between Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. And like that this match say what you will about Sean, you know, like, like you can't deny his M ring, like just how good he was. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is the match that sets the pace for all these other ladder matches that we've seen all throughout the years. If you look at the blueprint foundation of like later on, like a TLC or, or later on, like other matches like Rock against uh, Triple H at SummerSlam years later, and so on and so forth. The foundation for it is right here at this WrestleMania in this ladder match with Sean and Razor Ramon. And great storytelling, too, by the way, because Sean had been out for the WWF. He got suspended in real life, but uh, we're not going to talk about that. But um Comes back to the WWF, still claiming to be the Intercontinental Champion with Razors, the Intercontinental Championship, and like, like say, they put it, they put it up uh, for grabs in this ladder match. And man, there's so many spots that happen this matchup that you remember. We still, you, once again, we talk about imagery. That's a big thing with WrestleMania. And we're talking about tonight in these early days. What set the pace for these great WrestleManias to come? This is definitely uh, one of those images for sure. Yeah. So real, real quick, let's run down the rest of the card. You had a mixed tag team match with Bam Bam Bigelow and Luna Fashan against Doink and Dink the Clowns. Um, it's okay, buddy. I think this would be like the last real WrestleMania appearance for Doink Oof. other than the gimmick Battle Royal. This is a so, safe place. The safe place. It's going to be okay. Uh, we mentioned Randy Savage earlier. Uh, I believe this is actually the Macho Man's very last WrestleMania match. Uh, he would go up against Crush in a Falls Count Anywhere matchup. Also, the women's championship would be on the line as the Laundra Blaze would defend against the Lonnie Kai. And talk about coming full circle. The Lonnie Kai defending the WWF women's title at the first WrestleMania, and 10 years later, she's challenging for it. How crazy is that? Uh, also, you got the tag team titles on the line with men on a mission challenging the Quebecers, Shock and Pierre. And how crazy is this to think? That the Mad Frankenstein himself, PCO, this would be his first WrestleMania as he made his WrestleMania debut uh, as part of that tag team matchup. That and, man is not human. No, he's not. Yeah. And you also had the Earthquake against Adam Bomb on this show as well. But this show is definitely defined by the Bret Hart, Owen Hart angle and the Shawn Michaels Razor Ramon ladder match. Folks, it doesn't get much better than that. And it, yeah, I seriously still to this day is like probably my uh, easily my top five favorite WrestleManias of all times. WrestleMania ten. Can you choose between this this one and seven? Yeah, it's this one. I love okay. seven's like a personal one for me, but that it's ten, ten for sure. Mm -hmm. It's like it, the ten to me is like neck and neck almost as far as like define. There's WrestleManias, and we're going to talk about these all throughout this next month. There's just certain WrestleManias that defines certain eras in pro wrestling 17 defines the attitude era and like i say 10 this is for me defines the new generation era but yep, wow absolutely i can't believe we got through the first 10 wrestlemanias uh and we got so many more to go but yeah. but this is a good start i think a good launching point and like mm -hmm. i say if you got to look back and respect the history of WrestleMania because without these first 10 WrestleManias, man, it's just it kind of laid the foundation for what would come. Because, you know, if you've noticed on these manias, you know, they started as a spectacle and would go more into like storyline telling as well as into like the matches themselves. So 
there you go. Yeah. And the culmination of feuds would be at WrestleMania. They weren't like, we're going to yeah. do this at WrestleMania and then try to, con- like now, where it's like, well, let's do it WrestleMania backlash. It's It all led to WrestleMania. Much like, uh, if I remember correctly, much like WCW, uh, was it Starcade, I think. A lot of feuds led up to Starcade, but definitely WrestleMania was that, uh, that big year-long storytelling or everything coming ahead right there. And that was the transition, it seemed like, back in the early times, where mm-hmm. then it was especially uh, 9, 10, so on from there. Then you had, okay, you could either continue a story a different direction. Or somebody would say, okay, now Brett's now going this direction. Owen's going this direction. You're going here. You're going here. It kind of a shift, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like a a GPS, like Mark, like it's like, you know, like a fork in the road, so to say. Um, Yeah. And we got so many great WrestleMania still to talk about to come as we build up and anticipate and get to this year's WrestleMania. In other words, it's the most wonderful time of years, folks. It is going to be a fun month to come here on Learning the Ropes. But we've come to the end of our episode tonight. And as we always do when we end our episodes, we got to get that one last plug of Palooza in. Am I right? Yes, we do indeed. We thank you for joining us over here on the Panda Wrestling Company. If you have not done so already, go ahead and hit that follow button. Or if you feel so inclined, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. Um, if you don't feel like paying the $4.99, if you have an Amazon Prime membership, you can actually subscribe for free. And then also you can catch me and my good friend over here to my right, XLJ, the OG, over on, Lear- or over on Learning the Ropes. This is it, Learning the Ropes, over on Cole TV. Um, and XLJ, what do we have coming for the good people on Cole TV this week? Absolutely, my friends. So this upcoming week, we have on Wednesday, we have a brand new episode of our show called The Hunt, where we check out a place called Comic Book University. And then Thursday, you can catch a replay of Learning the Ropes. And Friday or at the end of the week, uh, we'll, you will catch our AEW Revolution prediction show. And that's right. Cold TV. Bye bye. Let's, let's go. And real quick, go. just want to plug this again. We are giving away some toys, some pretty cool toys. Uh, just leave a comment either here, either like on our YouTube channel, one of our videos, on our TikToks, whatever. Just say I Heart Cole TV, and you'll be entered to win one of these yeah. pretty exclusive. Yeah. We'll get this. We'll get this out on the Tiki Talkie. That's right. That's like right. Ninja. Oh, the Tiki Talkers. The Tiki Talkie don't stop. On the Tiki Talkie. And XLJ, the OG, if you'd be so kind to flash that shirt up there real quick. Don't flash us, but flash the shirt. Um, we do have some merch over <laughs> over, over at Sweet Doll Face Creations. We have Cold TV merch. We have Learning the Ropes merch. And there's much, much more merch over there. All your favorite content creators are over there. Um, that is Sweet Doll Face Creations. Link is in my bio. Um Definitely go check out some of the merch that's over there. Um, on Buy the, the damn merch, because I'm going to get in this plug of Palooza whether you want it to or not, boy. That's right. I'm back again, because I'm going to finish out this show right. And don't forget, you should check out Cold TV this week. I'm going to have a new episode of your show, Chilling with Rom. What the hell are we doing this week, XLJ? I don't know. You're going to have to tune in and find out, boy. See, that's how you plug things. You get right to the point, boy. Okay? You understand? I may have to take your job before too long, boy. You're you probably you Damn. probably are you probably are going to Ron, and last but certainly not not least, we're going to give him the big screen treatment. Brian's house of random. Oh man, Put now you, my full face. Oh. Plug yourself, good sir. Oh, plug myself. Ah oh. ha ha ah oh. yes. Uh, you can catch all my kind of random content. Uh, Brian's house of random on TikTok, on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. As mentioned, on TikTok is where I'm primarily doing the wrestling questions. Going to continue uh, maybe a new series this week. I'm going to kind of finalize that and maybe get a question out in the morning and go from there. I've got some notes lined up. I'm looking forward to those. And, uh, of course, if you want to go back and check out all the previous uh, content where we do questions for, like, NXT, top fives, all the way through top five is my thing, I guess. Um, And as well, not just wrestling stuff, but also I do – uh, product reviews, whether it's getting stuff from like Casey's and just say, hey, here's this kind of soda or uh, whatever, just the way my brain works and just 
it's like, ooh, here we go. Or like I'll hear a song and be like, ooh, here's something from an 80s song. Let's have fun with it and do something with a, a prop or something. So I do a lot of that stuff too. Um, I do a lot of those on TikTok, but then I'll try to carry those over in case you don't get to see it there on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, I've got a podcast on Anchor.fm, but I have not updated it since May 11th, which was w- the one-year anniversary. And I've not put anything on there since then, but you can go back and listen to all the old episodes and uh, get through it with this voice, which, like I said, I was in radio. I have a face for radio, um, but I actually, little known fact, I, most people are like, oh, you have such a good voice for radio and you sound good on there. I hate the sound of my own voice. Always have, probably always will, but uh, we'll get through it. So I uh, greatly appreciate you guys letting me come on tonight, even with all the terrible technical issues that uh, got in the way. Uh, I hope to be able to come back in the future at some point and I really enjoyed what I could catch in this conversation and the way you guys broke down these past WrestleManias and bringing back a lot of memories for me, whether getting to watch WrestleMania or just getting to like later on buy the VHS and say, Ooh, okay. Get to watch this match or this memory yeah. from Bret Hart and all these other great, great wrestlers to lead into what, like you said, lay the foundation for what we are seeing now it what wrestlemania is that super bowl of wrestling it is that granddaddy of them all because of what happened then how it just led through and the experiment and what it's led to to up to this point yeah absolutely so, man the early yeah, and, uh, <laughs> i mean uh, honestly cannot think of a better way to close the show than that right there he gave i mean a perfect summary of what wrestlemania is and why everyone gets so excited um at this time of year as we're on the road to wrestlemania um and strap in folks because we're going to continue to right. go over the history of wrestlemania as previously mentioned not next week though we will be doing the revolution watch along um exclusively here on the painter wrestling company twitch channel um, learning the ropes is going to be the watch along crew and we'll bring on tons of friends as well um but yeah then right back on it to it as we'll head all the way up to the current current wrestlemania that's right man it's the most wonderful time of year and thank you celtic destroyer for joining us tonight and watching and checking out the show we appreciate it and thank you all for joining us here on learning the ropes like Mr. B-Roll says, next week we'll be doing the AEW Revolution Watch Along, but then afterwards we'll pick right back up and be talking about the histories of WrestleMania all the way up until WrestleMania 39 this year. That's right. RVD, you going to be there? Of course I am, boy. I did not owe RVD. Kind of sounds like Ron Simmons. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe he just partaked in a little something-something, but anyways, I digress. Well, thank you all again for joining us here tonight on Learn of the Ropes. We appreciate it. And we'll see you next week for the AEW. Yay. Check out the AEW Revolution Watch Along. We'll see you next week, folks. Peace.